Hello and welcome to another HTML and CSS tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be looking at um, something called the HTML box model and using um, padding around our HTML elements. So basically um, when we're working with web pages, when we're creating web pages, we can basically think of every element inside our web page as a box. So for example, if we create a heading, this is a box. Okay, so our heading is a box. If we create another heading, that's also a box. If we create paragraphs, those are boxes and things like images are also boxes. So every element inside a web page can be considered as a box. And in CSS, we use the term the box model when we're talking about the design and the layout of elements on our web page. So elements such as headings and paragraphs. So the CSS box model is basically, um, it's a box that is wrapped, wrapped around each element. So there's a box wrapped around each heading, there's a box wrapped around each um, paragraph, an image and other things on our web pages. And the box um, basically consists of margins, borders, padding, and the actual content itself in the element. So if we have a look at this image here, this is basically the box model. So we have our content on our web page. So this isn't referring to all the content on our web page. This is the content inside an individual element. So imagine this is just a single heading or a single paragraph. Okay, it's a box or it's inside a box. So we have the content, it would be maybe the text in a paragraph or a heading. And then we have padding, which is basically space around the content. It's clear, transparent, space. So there's an area around our con content. And then uh, outside the padding we have a border that we can um, specify. We can specify um, a color of a border and whether it's a dashed or solid line border or um, another style. So it's optional. We don't have to have a border but we can put a border around our elements. Um, there's always padding around our elements but we can specify um, how, how big the padding is. So we have the content, we have the padding, then we have a border around the padding and content, and then uh, we have a margin. Okay, and the margin is also a clear and transparent space, but the margin goes around the border, so it's space around the border. Okay, so we can specify the padding, we can specify um, the border, so the size, the style, we can also specify the margin, and we can do this for uh, all around our content and we can specify it for the top, bottom, left and right. We can have, for example, a different border on the left, a different color border on the left and different color border on the right and same with the top and bottom. We can have different um, size padding on the top to what we might have on the left or the right or the bottom. So we have here a heading which we can consider as a box. It's an element. We can consider this as a box. We'll make another heading, a H2 heading, so a little bit smaller. So this is another box. Okay, um, and we'll make an even smaller heading. This is a box two. Let's put some full stops there. And we'll make a paragraph. And, yep. This is also a box. Okay, so we have four different HTML elements here. A H1 size heading, a H2 size heading, a H3 size heading, and a paragraph. And we can look at these or consider these all as boxes on our web page. All right, now in our head section of the web page, we can add a style tag. So we can either add our style tag here or we can refer to um, a separate CSS style sheet, but just to keep things, um, just to do things quickly, we'll just add the style inside the head section of the web page here. All right, so for our style, we can grab the H1 uh, element. All right, so we're going to apply a style to this H1 size heading or that box. Okay, so we can say background color, 
using the American spelling for color. We can give it a background color, we could say it's yellow. Remember that we can also use the HTML color codes or the hexadecimal codes in here using a hashtag and then six letters or numbers to um, specify exactly what color we want. But today we'll just uh, use the word, so yellow. And then we're going to have a look at how padding works. So we're going to add padding of 20 pixels around this heading. All right. So we'll just focus on padding for now. If I right click on Sublime Text and click on Open in Browser, I have four boxes here. So I've got a H1 size heading, H2, H3, and then my paragraph. But I've only applied a style to the actual um, H1 size heading. Okay, so you can see that there's a yellow background in this box. So you can actually see that it is a box. There is a box around this element. And you can see that there is also space around the content. So with this small heading, there's no there's no space around there. There's very little space around there. But with this larger heading, there's space around there now. On the left, the top, the bottom, and also at the right, but you can't see it because we don't have the text taking up that whole entire line there. But there is space over here that's reserved. Okay, so we can make the padding bigger, we could change it to 50 pixels and refresh the page. And now we have even more padding there. Okay, but we'll just change that back down to 20 pixels so it's not taking up the whole too much area. All right, now make a little bit more room here. And we're going to add a style for the H2 tag. All right, so again, we're going to add a background color. And this time we might say green for the color. But instead of just saying padding 20 pixels, this time we're going to apply padding to the top, the right, the bottom, and the left. And we're going to use a different um, padding thickness for each or width for each. So instead of putting padding, we can put, and you can see Sublime Text gives us some suggestions here. Suggestions. <laughs> we can put padding top. 50 pixels, Oops, typo, we can put uh, padding right, we might make that 20 pixels, padding uh, bottom, make that 50 pixels again, and then what have we left, padding left, all right, padding left can be 20 pixels as well, so 20 px. All right, so that's our H2 element. We've added a background color of green and we've added padding to the top, right, bottom and left of the content, but we have um, 50 pixels for the top and bottom and 20 pixels of padding for the left and right. So save that, Command S or Control S. Refresh the page and there we go. You can see that there's just a little bit of padding there. So there's 20 pixels of padding there, but on the top and the bottom, there's much more padding. There's 50 pixels of padding there or empty space. Okay, um, going back to the code, we can add another style for the H3 element. So this time the background color can be orange. All right, but we're going to apply the padding a little bit differently again. So as you can see in the first example with this H1 element, we've applied padding to all around the content using just padding, just using that, that padding word. But with H2, we've specified different padding uh, sizes for the top, right, bottom, and left. We can do the same thing here in with using the for the H3 element, we're going to add padding as well. And we can do exactly the same thing as what we've done with H2, but we can use a shortcut. Instead of having the padding for the top, right, bottom, and left on separate lines, we can save room and do it all on one line. So we can have padding 10px, 20px, uh, 10px, and 20px. And in order, this is the padding for the top, 
This is padding for the right. This is the bottom and this is the left. Okay, so we can uh, specify the padding there in order, all on one line, bit of a shortcut. So let's save that and go back to the web page and have a look. There we go, all right. So we have 20 on the top, 10, sorry, 20 on the left, 10 on the top, 10 on the bottom and 20 on the right. All right. So where are we? Okay. So in order again, that's top, uh, right, bottom and left. Okay. So now we've got one element and one box left on this page. We have the paragraph element. So let's apply a style for the paragraph. All right, background color. Mm, it's the last one, this will be blue. And for padding, we can use another shortcut. So say in this example for H3, for the top and for the bottom, the padding is the same. For the left, and for the right, the padding is also the same. So we shouldn't really have to specify four times for padding uh, top, right, bottom, left, if the padding is the same for the top and the bottom and for the right and the left. So we can use another shortcut here. And we can say padding 10px and 20px. And what this means is 10 pixels for top and bottom, 20 pixels for left and right. Okay, so when we mention, when we have four different um, sizes here, then we're specifying top, right, bottom, uh, and left in order. When we only mention two, we have uh, 10 pixels for both the top and the bottom. So the first one's for top and bottom. And then this on the right, the second um, one, which is 20 pixels, is for the left and right padding. And when we only mention one value for padding, then that means it's gonna be 20 pixels or whatever we say around the whole content. So all sides of the content. Okay, so save that. And our paragraph should now have uh, padding around it, 20 pixels on the left and the right, and then 10 pixels on the top and the bottom. Okay, so there's a few different ways, there's four different ways that we can apply padding to our um, to different boxes, so whether they're headings or paragraphs or anything else. So first way is applying it to all around the um, content. Second way is specifying separately the top, right, bottom, left. Third way is specifying top, right, bottom, and left, but doing so in one line. It's a bit of a shortcut. And the last method that we looked at was um, applying padding to the top and the bottom in one go and to the left and right in one go, all of that on one line. Okay, so that's basically how to, um, we've had a look at um, the box um, box model um, uh, start, have, we've had a look at the box model in HTML and CSS and we basically know now that every element in our page is considered as a box we can treat it as a box, we can add space around it, we can add padding, we can add borders, and we can specify margins as well that will go around the content. So we, um, we've had a look at the box model and we've had a look at how to apply background colors to our boxes and also the different ways of um, specifying the padding in the boxes. In the next tutorial, um, or next couple of tutorials, we'll look at margins and we'll also look at borders for our boxes. Thanks for watching.